Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, we can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, really. It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible, a terrible, strategy. terrible <laughs> strategy. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria has become in a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Welcome to the advocate. As my people say, today, now today, Sandra, a fresh face on the panel will be laying down the law as concerns gender based violence. Ekene mm, is all uh, for name and shame. In fact, she thinks we should have more of it. She's talking sex for grades. Liberals wants to tender his own summit on our financial summit. You know my man, liberals now, straight down the line. Chuka, not unknown to throw a curveball now and again. Today we'll be pitching it straight. He says, get a life, Nigeria. <laughs> I will be throwing my own way behind the sex for great matter and bringing a global perspective. You know how we like to hit the tracks. No time wasting. After the break. Let's go there. Some things may seem to be dominant until you take a step back. Sex for Max. I believe we all saw the BBC report on sex for Max in our universities. It's clear that abuse of power is prevalent in the world, not only in Nigeria or Africa, but we should know that not only those lecturers abuse their office. In fact, in every home, organization, civil service, and even religious centers, there is one form of abuse or other. Watching this documentary made me remember a scripture that says, there was no king in Israel at that time. Everyone did whatever they pleased, Judges 21, 25. However, I don't think we should wait for any foreign media to remind us of the menace in our land and how to handle it. By the way, it's not only in Nigeria that sexual harassment takes place. It's all over the world. Recently in the UK, a supply teacher in Doncaster took a puppy home for uh, three and four way sexual activity. Uh, Francis Jenkins, 45 year old, also paid another person approximately 13,000 pounds, partly so um, he would cover up her relationship with the girl. Dean Richard Johnson, 52-year-old man, admitted contacting a puppy through Facebook, buying her underwear, inviting her to his classroom for sex, and recording them together on a camera, bought with school funds. That's corruption, right? Okay. In 2015, he was separately um, convicted at Guildford Crown Court of possessing extreme pornography and jail for eight months suspended for two years. John Flatley, 30, sent sexual Snapchat messages to a female pupil after attending a prom at a school in Southwest London. This included a vibrator or dido. Would you like both? And well, um, you do love your bed, so you might as well spoil me with snaps. Where are the kings of our universities? Like that scripture says, when kings fail in their duties, people do as they like. And this is what is on display. Kings refer to the leaders, the institutions that reform and shape people and the reward and sanctions for bad behavior. And let's remember that this behavior is likely the same in other sectors and workplaces and offices. Sexual harassment is in almost every sector. Innumerable cases of lady friends whose recruitment needed to be cemented with consent to give sex 
to the headhunter, bosses taking advantage of their junior staff, lecturers to their um, students, husbands to their house guests. This really is a time for us to ask ourselves the pertinent question. Am I, as a male, free from sexual harassment of any kind? Because men also experience this, only they don't really talk about it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We need to create an enabling environment for both males and females and protect them as kings and queens. And this we must do deliberately. It's time for us as a people to have a new set of kings in Nigeria. May our kings wake up to their duties and ensure people play by the rules. Sexual harassment is a no-no and must be condemned by all. If you know the budget for sex in Nigeria is higher than the budget, the national budget. National budget. <laughs> Come on, say it again. Yes. The mm. bu this, uh, you, you see, um, these days, gradually, when um, these things, you, before these are things that were taboo, mm. but um, in our attempt to embrace hook, line, and sinker, that which was um, imported. You know, imported and introduced to us, we overdid it. And then thanks to not just moral decadence, the fact that um, now what we have, there are no more sanctions. Our laws are obeyed more in breach. Like the UK you refer to. Mm. It is not even that, you know, these were students under these lecturers. Yeah. You know, the um, uh, authorities melted out appropriate sanctions. Yeah. But here, it is happening, and until somebody shouts, you suspend the lecturer, and then a committee will be set up to investigate, and at the end and of the day, it will fizzle out. And there are no steps, initiative, to ensure that you know, this thing is curtailed. Because when you talk about um, university, it, it's, people are talking about it in the university because it's supposed to be an institution that grooms you in character mm -hmm. and learning. Frank, between what is happening here and what is happening in the UK America. Yeah, that, that's true. Yes, in the UK America, what they're doing is, is even mostly in primary schools. It's, that mm -hmm. means it's lower down the, wow. the age thing. And so the teachers are much older mm -hmm. than the students. They're not doing it for grades. That's they're true. doing it for kicks. Yeah. In Nigeria, it's for grades. Mm. It's good you make and, that distinction. You know, and yeah. you're doing it with people that are on the last stage of the education chain. Mm. You're just when you know after this, you probably not which, is, which, which as as liberal said, it's not true because mm. you then go on and in the office, yes, you're you're back to square one mm. where your boss is now harassing you. you. So, exactly. but let's just look at it as in this is the last time you have such power over somebody, yeah. which is university, and so that's why it has become the way it is. Mm. Uh, so there's a bit of a difference. And when you look at the way they attack these matters abroad, I actually applaud them. You know, they humiliate the teacher. Mm -hmm. and I don't think there's even one teacher who has been dealt with that doesn't feel ashamed yeah. for having done what he did. I mean, I, I, but, yeah, please you know, finish. these lecturers, they're doing it with adults. So I think it's very, very different. Yeah. It's, it's going to be very difficult to... to um, Make them ashamed of what they've done. Well, I mean, you can, you can. No, no, I mean, okay. But I will talk okay. about it. Okay, so, um, you know, when Libras, he said something about um, there not being sanctions, and which I quite disagree because um, when you look at our laws, there are actually sanctions for each of these um, crimes and offenses. The question is, are these sanctions stiff enough to prevent perpetrators or with intentions from, you know, further committing these crimes? Three to five years? Is that not stiff enough? That's very stiff. Are you, are you sure it's, what, it's apart not being from, done? Apart from, that one, lecturer, lecturer, at, apart from that one lecturer, that one lecturer that was mm. given six years. Tell me another one that. But please, that's what I mean. Now, that yeah. exactly, yeah. Mm. which brings home my point of enforcement. So these mm. sanctions are there, but do we really enforce this law? Coming to my point. Yeah. Uh -huh. No, no. What you said was quite different. You said mm. there are no sanctions, sanctions yeah. which I think oh, there okay. are sanctions. Okay, you probably but okay. They're not okay. being enforced. They're not being enforced. I will forgive you. I will forgive you. But go on anyway. I get it. The reason why they're not being, really, I think because um, in my own point of view, I would say we live in a country where you can actually buy freedom, you can buy justice or you can buy injustice. So not technically saying going to, uh, you know, going behind to bribe judges or our justice system, first of all, is crippled in the sense that there is, um, you, you lodge a complaint, or a, a university student, for instance, lodges a complaint in court, and it takes several years before you can even go on trial. These students 
they are victims of um, they are victims of sexual violence. They could decide that they do not want to pursue this case anymore because they want to, you know, they want to forget about the experience. They want to move on with their lives. That's not and this exactly, yeah. and this situation leads to slow prosecution of cases. And at the end of the day, there is nothing to convict the the offender with and he goes on scot free. Yeah, let me come in on that. Let me um, because I was just thinking about the culture. When you know all of you were speaking, I'm saying and he uh, Chuka was making the distinction between the UK and here. I'm happy the BBC did what they did because I just mm -hmm. feel and when I come to my advocacy, hopefully we'll explore that further. Mm -hmm. But I just feel that the culture here, even the victims themselves are victims in their own minds first because they feel that they don't have a choice. I have somebody who is close to me who stays with me was being sexually harassed. But she didn't tell me until the last minute. The, the man had the courage to bring out his private and show to her. In her and, and when she told me, I'm like, that's the end. This thing, I'm not going to let it rest. So I escalated it, and I reported and reported. You know, even the people she, I was reporting to were busy trying to say, oh, apologize to her. Mm -hmm. You know, after yeah. having done that and yeah. she let him off the hook, he had the courage to be making Leave fun of her, God. making Leave fun of her God. in the public exactly. sphere. That was the one that offended her, that I refused you. But you have the courage to go around making me look bad to Leave everybody. For God. You know, I said mm -hmm. no. This one, they had to fire the man because I said to myself, "How dare okay. you oppress this woman who is trying to?" And even in reporting, the people around were making her feel bad. How, even other women were mocking her and saying, "You know, is it just because he showed it to you? What is there? What is wrong? You know, yeah. is that why you're?" you're and I said, "No. We women, we need to be empowered. Students need to be empowered. They need to know their rights. They need to understand that they have every right to stand up for themselves." And you know, they shouldn't feel victimized by the fact that men or society sees them as somehow the lesser. Okay. Let, me the lesser quickly, let me quickly say something mm. here. Where you have sanctions in the books that are not enforced, what it means is that there are none. Secondly, the university, you don't need to wait to get to court for you to take steps to curtail. You can have a, an independent body that these people can report to mm. and then conduct independent investigation to verify without necessarily even calling on the victim yeah, the to come clear, testify. Mm. So people, the, you organizations, I, I used to be a facilitator in an organization. After, first, after each training, you set exams for the students, then you give them assessment forms that another facilitator would come collect. And then you wouldn't know who would, call, who would assess your, your assessment forms. While you're assessing the students, they also assess you. Yeah. How many universities still do this? Yeah. In some cases, I know the one that happened to a pastor, the church members were, the, in fact, the, the pressure on the young girl's parents was so much, oh, please don't let the devil use you to bring down this pastor. And not too long ago also, you saw the, the COSA issue. You saw the back and forth, and it's still on. Still but I like the fact that, um, um, what's the name of this um, church now? They came out immediately and issue oh, a statement. Uh, for, for Fox Square. Square. Yeah. They didn't Square. wait. They didn't wait. And to no, begin to I'm, deny. I'm not applauding them because no, no, no. how could a man like that get to be senior pastor of your church? Did you, you screen this? Ah. No, you will not. You will not. No, no, no. I have no, 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 no. You can see the signs. Okay, no, there are no, you're there talking are about no. character. You're talking about character assessment. Yeah. You can. You can tell. The man, was, the man was very arrogant in the way he went about it. I don't think well, it's something some people that would know in the church. I hold that church accountable for having him But I think. But I think that the younger generation now coming up are going to, um, are, are probably the ones that are going to make the lecturers uh, unable to carry on like this. Sorry, I, I'm still on this pastor, forgive me, because oh, okay. the same Bible that teaches us, this, it says by their fruits you shall know them. Are you telling me that the church doesn't have enough discernment to know a man who is Lecturers. Okay, there are so who many is, things we overlook. There are, many, uh, there are so many things I, I we overlook in this, and then in this society then we poor judgment, that, even ordinarily, we that ordinarily... Sir, are you accepting this? <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't do, forget. Do is, I don't accept it. No, the thing is, you, you can't, can't tell. everywhere. You can't tell. Exactly. It was obvious to me, even it's, watching it's the video. It's not written on their faces. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, you know, it, it really is. Then we're not looking deeply enough. It really is. not ready. But I look forward to the younger generation. They will be the ones to humiliate Which one? The one big body here that Gwenga was big body here? No, he's not No, he's too. Older than the younger generation. I'm really referring now to people who are. No, he's not referring to my generation. He's referring to the generation that I addressed last last week. About their generation that they are not being their sense. Okay. Anyway, it's about changing the negative culture, one advocacy at a time. Sandra further drives the point home after the break. You're watching the Advocate on Plus TV Africa. There's value in striking whilst the iron is hot. In a society that's largely patriarchal, 
where being a woman seems to be a disadvantage. Women have now banded together to fight for their rights to be heard, combat discrimination, disband rape culture, and reprimand crimes against the female gender. The tales of sexual and gender-based violence still abound in our society, with several advocates rising up to challenge the status quo. Let's consider a young Nigerian teenager from far northeast who is barely 15 years of age and already a mother of two. She's forced to accept a reality that she never wanted simply because of a cultural misnomer. She tells a story of how she was compelled to drop out of school and is now married to a man triple her age. Her biggest fear being to grow up and watch the circle repeat itself, which in most cases will be actualized. The story of Ada, as she shares her journey to Libya, will leave you between tears and disgust, wondering why such predators still roam free and are aided by society to continue in their atrocities. Raped at 14, trafficked and cajoled into prostitution, subjected to all manner of inhuman and degrading treatment, rescued by a man who would in turn molest and abuse her, leave her with a battered body and a son as a constant reminder of her ordeal and ironically, her only hope to survival. It was seen that the law is disabled and incapable of catching up with the, its offenders. It goes on and on, and just recently, the sex for grades trend, which has revealed how deeply rooted and institutionalized our society ills have become. Sadly, there are more stories of victims and survivors, as we see only the bizarre and extreme cases of gender-based violence make it to our news headlines. Unfortunately, the police would rather mediate between perpetrators and families of victims than bring culprits to justice. But how could you even blame them when the Nigerian justice system seems to offer victims only a crawling hope to justice? In my honest opinion, to advocate a fight against gender-based violence is a step for humanity and gender equality. The future looks exciting with many more daring advocates willing to change stereotypes Break the silence and push for balance and gender equity. The race is on. We need you, now more than ever, to join in the noble cause until we win. Yes, I think I'll start this one off. Um, thank you very much for that. Um, I think some of the illustrations, it's useful to have them because it, it just gives you an insight into another life. You know, I can't imagine at the age of 15 with two children and married to someone twice my age. I mean, what is that? That's like you're, you're being condemned to one reality. kind of life. That, you, your life will never start, essentially. Um, but I, I was asking, you know, when you were saying that, where, where, where are her extended family? Where are her, where, where are her aunties? Where, where is her mom? And that's part of why I was pressing the issue with that pastor. You have no voice. I'm coming now. That's part of the reason why I was pressing the issue with that pastor, even her dad or uncles, whoever. I feel we, in this society, and when you mentioned that the police are more interested in mediating, you know, say, like what they said to the lady under my care, oh, let him apologize to you. We seem to have a warped sense of justice these days. When you should be hard on people, you're busy being lenient. You're letting people off the hook. You're saying, oh, allow them, allow them. They didn't know. You're, you're understanding with. I'm telling you that if Why somebody is like meant to be in a position of authority. When your you governors know, negotiate with bandits. Yes. You can't but blame you know the governors for everything. I think we, we ourselves as a society, lawyers, we're even, confused. Even lawyers have noticed now that I, I've started to believe that law is about negotiation, about <laughs> if you owe me 15 million naira and I say no, it's seven, two lawyers come from each side and they get me to pay 10 million so that it will be in the middle of seven and, and yeah. Are you what's saying that what's going on? No, no, no. <laughs> this is factual. Yeah. Yeah. question. Not, it's, 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 this is the reality on ground. reality on yeah. ground. Yeah. And that's it not appears, justice. It appears that's not the justice. Have that no, quickly, quickly, let me, let me try. 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 You might want to explain. This is Hydra headed, but let me attempt to put her with one stone. Yes, attempt to You see, the society we live in, in trying times. You know, times are not hard. end times. No, trying. Well, you get to the trying time for the for end, end time. times. Okay, times are hard and difficult. And then you, like um, Sandra said, you live in a society where I say it always: laws are observing breach, and then there are no facilities to actually, you know, act uh, activate the instrumentalities of the law, and so you are now left to self help. Self help in some cases might even be the court. Or the negotiator, yeah. a situation where lawyer government would rather not obey their own laws, mm. 
And so when you are when you are in such a situation, a man is owing you 15 million and he says, Go to hell, I yeah. won't pay, the heavens won't fall. And then the lawyer says, Well, with what he has, let's see what we can scratch from him. He now comes, he writes a strongly Half worded letter. Better than none. You say, the man says, okay, I am owing seven. You say, bring the seven first. Let's begin to drag the other ones. That's what happened in, in such cases. Then in the issue of um, this gender-based um, equality, we need this more than ever before. But unfortunately, the people that advocate it, they mount it, but they refuse to practice it. I saw a video recently, a picture recently, of uh, Samadu Bello, you know, encouraging the girl child to go to school as far back yeah. as 1961 mm -hmm. in the North. Mm -hmm. But after that, thereafter, this is the same region that still marries out young girl at 13 Correct. and expect her, you know, not to have a say in her marriage. Mm -hmm. Where the mother also was probably married out that same, same way. way. And yeah. so she's used to it. She has no say. Where the woman is to be seen and not to be heard. Mm -hmm. And until, even with the recent introduction of the girl, uh, the Child Right Act, what happened? How many states in the north have domesticated that law? Yes. Mm -hmm. They've refused to mm -hmm. because they say it conflicts with their so, religion. So, Liberals, if I get you right, you're saying that because there's compromise at the top, it, it, it's Yes, that's what I'm saying. But I, I still want to say that even when I because, look at individuals... Because, so, sorry, because yeah, please, the essence of government is the security and welfare of the people. And so, if the government cannot provide security and welfare, we, what happens is self-help. So for those that can handle it, mm. they will do it. For those that can't handle it, they are helpless. They resort to, they wait for one NGO to come assist. And if those same NGO, if they don't have the backing of, you know, the government, in this case the courts, and in some cases executive orders or, or, or laws, then also okay. they are, they are Okay, let me, let me just quickly say this because I want to hear, <laughs> you know, I'm still talking about the individuals that, you know, like us the here, people on the streets, mm. you know, like even this case, the sex for grades, you have people coming and saying, you know, this one is yeah, BBC are doing too much at Proco. There's a mentality where everybody feels that, you no, know, no. society is not where it should be. So, Every, wait, wait, now let me make the point. So, they know if you today, if I stood up and said I want to take an action, I want to discipline someone, you find people begging, even when that person has been. Yeah, wrong. but you will also and, still and find some people, people who will encourage you. Compromise. No, but very few. You know, no, like no, I'm talking no, about no, this girl, no, the girl no, under my care that reported. The women there were against her. She had to just blind herself to the fact that mm -hmm. she was unpopular. Depending on where it. you live. I, I, if you are in some other no, area, it's some a other Nigerian women. Thing. I've observed it. No, no, let's People not generalize. Very, that's fallacious. Yes, it's a generalization, that's, I agree. No, no, that's, that's but I, feel, I, I do, I don't, I don't like generalizing. But we tend to, we tend to, we tend to want to be merciful mm -hmm. when it's we religious. Mm -hmm. It's religious. It's religious. Just, just yeah. like I said, yeah. only very few, um, only, only the bizarre and extreme cases mm -hmm. make it to um, make it to court or make it to the news. So you see a situation like yours, because they think that it's minimal or it's not so, it's not such a serious offense, so it should be swept under the carpet, which is actually wrong. I mean, it's like they say, now from club, they take the enter dance. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So situations like this, oh, he, or he already brought out his sexual organ. You don't know what might happen in the next case or with the next person. It may not be with your girl. Yes, it may but, be but, with another person. But the Lagos State well, Government, I was when this out, Lagos State Government is doing something very fantastic in this regard. Um, just that they need, you know, more advocacy. Okay. They have offices yeah, they for, have, yeah, for, for this. And, and I think that's the only state that is doing it for now in the entire country. You see, until we begin to see women, female gender, as a blessing, as a favor, we, this abuse may not stop because it has become not just endemic now, it has become an easy culture, this yeah. thing, especially in the northern part. And I keep on saying, and when I see people say I'm doing um, advocacy for female gender, get, get, get child right. Get Listen, I'm not saying you shouldn't do get child whatever, but when you are raising girls as queens and nobody is raising boys as kings, yes. what happens point. at the exactly. end of the day? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, the perpetrators are still male. You don't get situations whereby, you know, women are perpetrating this evil on their, their fellow sex. So I think so. so. Mm. Well, like I said, the race is on and the finish line is in sight. After the break, I cannot firmly seizes the button. Every challenge has a solution. As referenced by Wenga and Sandra, most of us may have heard about or even watched some of the footage from a recent undercover investigative work of journalism, which we're told took about a year to put together. It was 
the result of a series of staged encounters between the targeted so-called professors and even men of God and reporters posing as students in both the University of Lagos and the University of Ghana. The aim was to uncover the common knowledge and experience of students that professors prey on them for sex in exchange for grades or other academic favors. Suffice it to say, the media investigators were not disappointed. This recent expose leads me to make several deductions. One, that actually seeing is believing as far as our national state of decadence and corruption is concerned. Things have reached such a stage that unless we're confronted with the crude reality, we don't seem to be arrested from our zombie-like sleepwalk through life. Also, that such expositions are a weapon for change. I've always believed this, but somehow seeing it in action drove the point home for me. It is clear that advocacy can be most powerful on this front. Now, some may say that after we've watched this and it's trended on social media, then what? So what? But I put it to you that at least for the time being, a lot of these so-called predator professors will be afraid to brazenly prey on their students in this way, since they don't know which female students have a hidden camera on them. What we then look forward to is institutions taking over from here and doing something about it. Although it is pitiful um, and even pathetic that the institutions confronted, Unilag and may I call it Unigana, claim that they are strong advocates against female sexual harassment. <laughs> That's laughable. In the, sight of, in the light of the fact that we find that the majority testimony is that sexual harassment is the norm. It's a culture. So clearly they can't be strong on it or they would have uncovered what's under their very noses. So what do I propose? We, the citizens, have to continue from here and hold these shameless individuals and institutions to account. Essentially, my advocacy is really that we need more of this in the media and we need more students to be bold enough to report it to the advocates and the media. Together, we need to uncover these stories and connect the victims to legal bodies who will then bring an action against the perpetrators. In this way, we can bring it to light and stamp it out. Our social cru crusade must be hottest in our educational institutions, which are at the helm of national transformation. Let us make Nigeria uncomfortable and hot for the predators amongst us. Mm, Why do you hand it to Chika? You know the funny, you know the funny thing? <laughs> I, 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 I get to see students from Yaba Tech and Uni, like architecture students, uh, quite a bit. And I've, won I've often wondered whether, because no one has ever spoken to me about it, and I've often wondered whether it happens in a lot in that sort of department because I think it can vary actually from yeah it varies, it varies. You know, maybe a kind of course is yeah. not does not have the kind of personalities as professors or students that that will uh, thrive oh, really? yes in Nigerian you know, University there are some so, courses that are how man would do uh, you know, so, mm -hmm. I, so I, it is prevalent I, but now I'm this. going to uh, so I'm not, <laughs> now I'm going to actually take I'm going to do my own little um, some investigation. investigation, yes. Well, but does that matter? No, yeah, but, but, so but I don't really, know whether I can, I, what I can do. No, I, really. I can't be going there and behaving like I'm spreading knowledge and everything. Then I go in and then I, I leave and yeah, well, you, business as usual. Mm, you're not going to pass you're unless not, you do this. You're not, I mean, I'm coming re, there really, too. Really, uh, you said yeah. something that um, the university should take it up from here, which mm. had always been my you know, advocacy. It's not just sex for Marx. There are situations where the lecturer will stand right in front of the class and say, in my time, nobody made first class, and so nobody will make first class here. Yeah. OK, there's that as well, yes. That's also harassment. Right. That's yeah. yeah. You know? And what are the universities doing? A situation where the students you are teaching are not bold enough to question. I had a situation where, in year two, the lecturer you know, cited two authorities, and I said, there is a, an authority, Bernard and Huggins, that conflicts with the authorities that you have cited. And he asks me, who are you? I'm an authority in this cause. Who are you to challenge my, you know? Uh, because, you know, some of us are that stayed at home for three years before we entered the university. And so we were lawyers before we started reading law. <laughs> <laughs> and so I stood my ground. And the next day, the next day, the woman, lady professor, she came back to class and she called me out and said she had actually checked it 
and that she owned up that she, she was a woman. Yes, woman. And, 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 <laughs> does that have anything to do? No, you go was blocking her. Bobadia, <laughs> Professor Bobadia. <laughs> let me oh, okay. you know, give okay. her okay. that. Um, I remember in law school, before law school, as a university undergraduate, we had a um, um, mode of dressing, we called it the dress code. And there were sanctions for not, you know, being properly dressed. So also universities can introduce, because some of them are complaining that the dressing I, the the mm -hmm. dress girls dress to, to harass them, no. you know. Yeah. But for no, me, but it's, it's neither here nor there because no, you, to, you are an adult. Extent, Even if a girl in. is wearing pants to my class, my own is a teach. I can That's also tell her. Is is there is no reason to no. 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 sexual no. harassment. No. No. So no. you can using, abuse. Okay, no, you see, he's yeah. using so the woman as I disagree. I disagree. I disagree. The man will also not show up in his boxers. No, but if you connect the two, it's almost like you're justifying. No, that's you see, that's the problem with this word political correctness. It is not justification. If somebody dresses provocatively, indecently, indecently or whatever, mm. and, and I don't know where we will draw that line, yes. but I think there are some that everybody will suddenly say it's this crossed the is, line. Yeah. Yeah. Quite honestly, how can you not find a correlation no, no, no. We're between not saying, we're the not bad saying. behavior that then the man or woman exhibits? I'm not suggesting that it's, it's right, mm. but I'm just saying, look, we're, it's stimulus. Isn't that what we yeah. learned in biology? You've been stimulated. Oh, I get your point. I get, I get How can point. we ignore it? But you, you can cannot to stimulate you to no, the no, point no. of you now committing. Yeah, no, I know that to commit a crime, uh, you have to take step that over decision. The, yes, exactly. Oh, don't forget. Let, let's so, try and you, fight you this know, thing let me properly. From there, yeah. from don't don't goes. forget, like I tell people, you see, you don't, you don't backslide in one day. Right. It's gradual. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Same thing here. You don't complain that as a lecturer, I dress sexy. It doesn't get into your head in one day. It's gradual. Same way, I will tell you in my class as a lecturer, you can't enter my class this, Dress this way. dressing this way. So you can exactly. arrest and nothing will okay. happen. Yes, you can arrest it in that way. Correct? Do you understand? Yeah. Yes. Because it is, it's a gradual so, process. You don't yeah. get into someone's head. So that's, I wanted to ask, I mean, but liberals just took it out of my mind. That Which bring how do you, hold on, how do you, how do you just, how do you come into terms with the baby dear babes? The slave mama, the slave, the slave queens. queens. They are not in school to read, even though they are intelligent, even though they are brainy. They are not in school to read, but they are just in school to slay, to slay, and to frustrate anybody to get their mark. So thank you. So there must be a structure also for the lecturers and the staff in any organization <laughs> for any woman who is also trying to, to slay them. To slay them. That's that's one. Number two. I went to a university. I won't mention the school, a private university, and I found out that. All the lecturers' office, all the offices, all are transparent. Mm. Okay. All. As in the glass. Glass. As in from the bottom to a particular level, it's um, wood. But from there, you can see, you may what? not hear what they're discussing, some proof somehow, but you will see. Then there are major cameras at some strategic points viewing what is happening. So I think um, that, that's That a good also will learn. Yeah. Yes, sorry. Sandra, you're going to okay, say something. Okay, so um, basically, I think that um, just as he has rightly put it, improving boldness amongst um, students, they would, have the, they would have more audacity to come out openly. And then addressing the issue of um, the slay queens who want to get grades by all means, I think it's simple. Penalty for not reading is failure. So if you're going through a university, a university process, you are the lecturer, you are the professor, you have a level of authority over such students. If a student comes to offer you, okay, I want to pass by all means, what will it cost me? You know what it will cost you. If you want to, if you want to read or if you want to pass an exam, you read. If you don't read, you fail. It's as simple as that. That, I think, is the solution. Okay, well, we've preferred our solutions. Now it's time for you to tender yours, or at least your viewpoint. On way body air, <laughs> Florence O.K. Okay, Allison says, to dial back would be to start schooling the children or youth on these issues. On Shore, he who is to come, Jane Anam says, I'm for Shore anytime. Hmm. Sold out supporter. On 59 years and beyond, Freedom Ninja says, the fight against these evil politicians is a patriotic cause and we will never end until they are brought to justice. On medical malpractice, Rox Omowumi simply says, I love this program. Wow, thanks Rox, uh, we're sending love to you too. Do keep your comments coming in on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com 
slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Submit or summit. After the break, Libras is balancing the books. Giving with one hand and taking with another. It is a sleight of hand or a magician trick. A submit for our economic summit. The Nigerian Economic Summit held in Abuja on Monday, the 7th of October, 2019. And I wonder, apart from the rush to be counted among nations that hold the economic summit, do government ever take advice away from such events? The reason for my question is quite obvious. Because if you still think with such a summit as it is with serious-minded countries who listen to their economic advisors, Nigeria is on a path to greatness, you are probably dreaming and need to wake up fast. I hope they remember to inform the government in that summit that in the age where the world has become a global village and information travel faster than light, no right-thinking business person will invest his hard-earned money in your country where government doesn't obey her own rules and cut others. Where the biggest business is government. Even local businessmen would rather go into politics mm. and government than create businesses. No economic grow where her government pays 12% or more interest on treasury bills, and then expect people to establish factories. No nation neglects the education of our youth and expect a prosperous future. What should encourage a businessman to invest his one billion naira in agricultural sector when he can get 120 million profit on it by just fixing, fixing it in a bank for a few months? What should incentivize someone to create a job when he can get 15% profit with a mere phone call, 100% from forest trade, as rightly queried by Ade Tilewa, Ade Tomiwa, an economist. Closing our borders to stop smuggling of goods you don't produce at home, yet opening the same borders for medical tourism for public officials has a crippling effect on an economy. Charging high tariffs on all goods you don't produce or have alternative to, yet budgeting government fund to subsidize the lifestyle of government officials is extended stupidity. Having interest rates as high as 35% are then expecting people to establish fa factories while government officials are busy buying properties abroad with funds from over inflicted government contract is wickedness. Increasing taxes, introducing toll, taxing cash deposit and withdrawal, the direct opposite of an incentive to increase productivity, while retaining huge salaries and expensive vehicles for both the legislatives and legislators is senseless. Lastly, granting amnesties to terrorists, militants, armed bandits, killer headsmen, why trying those that question government spending accountability for treason, treasonable felony is the height of our seriousness. And until we reverse this trend, our economy will continue to be in reverse gear. Quite. It has been in reverse forever. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm very All those things listed there are just common sense. You don't need more than common sense. You don't need to study economics or law or anything to know that you don't squander money on yourself and then you tell others to go and work. Mm. It will never work. Even, I mean, I know how much can be made just for being a Forex dealer or working with them to get my Forex and whatever. The president has cooled you know, now because it, he's working hard. It, 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 he's working hard at what? He has cooled. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel sad for this country because... We're heading nowhere fast. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, I don't know what you think. I, mean, I, I was going to come in and say, um, you know, when, when we're talking the previous advocacy, what came to mind? I, I heard that there's a student in Zamfara in a university who actually made a constructive criticism, a bit like what you're saying. He said, look, that this governor, if he sold five of his cars, he could fund, and he gave an illustration, and he basically summarized, and they took the guy and imprisoned him. Yeah. Now, my question is, and the reason I brought it up is, say, it's, very, it's all very well us complaining, but... Nigeria is a team, and people keep saying, you know, politics is a game of numbers. We're more in Nigeria who know that we're suffering at the hands of a few who are mismanaging our, you know. It's surely we can team up. Somebody then asked the question, why didn't a lawyer go and represent that student who managed to speak out? Why doesn't somebody in society get behind those who are willing to, you know, put themselves on the line to point out? Because we're never going to stop pointing out these things. That's what a democracy is all about. But then when that person goes forward, it's like, you know, a game of football and exposes themselves and says, you're doing the wrong thing. What do the rest of us do? Do we get behind them? Or do we stay in our homes and we, you know, we're armchair critics? You know, what do we do we, so that that voice of that person is amplified mm -hmm. on our behalf? We live under a dictatorship. We're not in a democracy. That's what you have to understand. Um, um, look at the uh, Prime Minister of England prorogued um, parliament and he was taken to court. 
and the Supreme Court said it was illegal. And immediately, it went, it, and they immediately didn't need to wait the, for anything. interpretation. It, immediately, that was it. The, the speaker said... No, you see, the question I'm asking, now, I, I hear... Okay. Our people can't do that. Because me, I'm going to take who to court, and which court, and what will happen when I go to court. If, 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 if it's who difficult appointed, to... Who appointed, if it's the difficult to yeah. Who appointed the judge? No, even... You might even argue that the judge is everywhere appointed by somebody. You know, I, I know the process is always mm -hmm. well laid out, but in the end, things are done by people. So yes. it's that people... is that there's institutions that do their job to ensure checks and balances, and those people who are in those institutions are not the owners of those institutions, and they have vowed and sworn to uphold uh, the values that that country has grown to have. We have no values in Nigeria, obvious now. Not sorry, not that we don't have values, and there's no, um, uh, the, 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 those in power have subjugated those values. No, but what I'm saying and is, Chuka, we can't. We, we have a choice. As far as I'm concerned, the choice is mm. before us now more than ever. Are you going to live with a victim mentality, or are you going to actually rise up? This is, what, this is what the spirit of the advocate says to me. Nigerians are you going to actually say, we can do something about it, or we're going to forever stay and say, we can't do anything? Because for me, that's a dead end. I, I can't live like that. So I have to always say to myself, there must be a way forward, and I will find it. Well, that's what I'm saying. As you, you start with advocating, us. then mm -hmm. you look for those who are sticking their necks out, and you get behind them. Well, with funds. Yeah. Exactly. Any way you can. And so looking fun, for, so. Th these days, looking for um, politicians or executives or legislators who are, you know, in the position to also change this situation, but they themselves are also silent or they themselves are also, they've also joined the bad wagon yeah. and co contributing to the decadence in the society. Mm. You know, I once had, um, I, I was speaking with a friend um, like, I think some two weeks ago and, you know, he used to be the patriot of Nigeria sticking his neck out and saying this country i would change this country amen. and just recently you know it's something to say amen for really so just recently we had the conversation and then he said i'm you know i'm looking for a way out and i'm like even you looking for a way out he says it okay, <laughs> Does that make I'm sense? I'm not looking for a way. Does that make sense to you? I know, <laughs> really. And so I'm like, what was your breaking no, point? For someone who had, you know, you know, over time said, I am sticking my neck out for this nation, Nigeria will be better. What was your breaking point? And he says, not even 2000, this year, when the CJN was, you know, removed from office, how does that happen in it's a nation, in, in a democratically nation that the CJN will be removed from office and all 190 million population are keeping quiet about it. No, but, but really, because so, we don't so, have but, a but voice. Did the CJN like, commit the offences he was guilty of? Because let, now we have a situation. I don't think that's the... Let, because, let, yes, let, that's because, that's no, the because point. if you open yourself, you can, can be used. Let me quickly answer. No, your vibe can answer this somewhere. Uh -huh. I said a, a situation, a, a society that wants, that truly wants to correct the ills of the society, what do you do when you start a process so as not to be seen to be victimizing such persons? You see it through. The case of the CGN, what has happened mm -hmm. to show that that's why people are saying, No, oh, it was all about victimization. Mm -hmm. You started a process, so he was under investigation, he lodged money here, he lodged money there, mm -hmm. and then you want to charge him. So, why, why what are we, where are we where now? Are we now? That, yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. That's that's the question. That's where are we now? Even in that, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and so, secondly, the people you cannot talk about people, why are we not standing up? Do you know how many have died standing up? Yeah, and then continue, there though. is nothing. On oh, those days, under the military, you could get, you know, grants from donors to assist those who were standing up. But now, even you that is standing up, you stand on one leg. <laughs> You're standing on one leg in terms of is it social, financial, or politically. And then you now need, there are so many people also that who are, you are helping to stand. So the, the, the situation really, in most cases, is helpless. I, I, and I'm like, take the case of Shuare. We exactly. talked about it last week. I was mm. going there. He called out for protests. Why the same government is negotiating with killers and okay, saying they are seeing the benefit of giving killers money. Amnesty. Mm. And then those that are questioning you, you arrest them and you say you want to try them, they are bad losers. And why the matter is in court, court gave order. You say no, you won't obey. You are even threatening the judge mm -hmm. who gave such an order. Mm -hmm. and no, liberals, doubtless, these things are happening. What I'm trying to say is the countries that people are checking out to, 
People fought and died for those countries. Now you want to just emigrate and enjoy. There's nothing you're going to get in this life that you don't have to get it by believing okay. and you're, digging your heels in. Fight it's not going to be given to you on a you're, platter. You're you're fight, you fight, fight when there's you. a system. Okay. Why yes. agree with you? you know, they fought even when there was no system. Oh, no, 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 no. There were more systems than you thought. Okay. Maybe we'll look at history of other democracies. I agree with you. Like I always say, that the mountain you run away from is waiting for you when you come back. But guess what? South Africans, we stand or they stood and fought apartheid. Why? Because they know that is hope. So let me borrow the word of Jesus and his followers. He will all, when he say, follow me and I will make you. Who is telling you to follow him or her in Nigeria that he will make you? You are the one making yourself. You are the local government chairman of yourself the state yeah. governor of yourself, the president of the Federal Republic mm -hmm. of your family. Does that make sense to you? So when you live in that kind of atmosphere, yes, what is the hope? Listen to me. Mm -hmm. Every, it, has been, it, has been, it has been said that until you give up in your soul, you cannot die. People are giving up every day in Nigeria because there is no hope. So the question is, where and is And it's only hope that keeps you alive. And it's only hope We're still here. We're still here. So there must be hope. Exactly. A good place to We're still here. Well, that is why we are still advocating. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, um, hope. And so we are giving hope. Hope, nice. well, we, hope 2020. Yes. So we keep advocating every day for the thief, one day for the owner of the house. Chuka puts a stamp of ownership on his advocacy. Next up. Right, if you are going to say it, then do so with bold face. It's likely no one will kill you. Get a life, Nigeria. Nigeria is drifting politically, socially, economically, sexually. It may well be that the nation I knew, or perhaps thought it was, was not and is not. How will ambassador the West for sexual frivolity, the American ladies in almost non-existent hot pants, while our fine Nigerians covered up in spite of the heat, you mustn't marry an Oibo girl, they are loose. There was the oft-peddled condemnation of a gun-carrying U.S., of the unclean European who would shower twice a week. Then came the gay movement, and we were pretty damn sure that the West was sunk. But look at Nigeria today. Femi Runshewe, government's top arts and culture man, is locked in a battle with a flagrant cross-dresser, Idris Okuneye, who goes by the name Bob Risky. University lecturers have turned Lothario and are being exposed as we speak. Bloody good. Our politicians, at least the joint session of the Houses, Senate and Reps, treated the president to an emperor's welcome as he came to deliver the budget proposal. Are these things really new? For how long have we suppressed rape? Aren't we still doing so even now? Has the male attitude toward relationships with females changed? Is the northern Nigeria not still full with child brides? There's always been talk of homosexuality in high government for years. Apparently, many millionaires were made or rode on this practice. Lecturers have enjoyed illicit and forced sex for decades, preying on young ladies and men. And one only has to watch video clips to remember that General Gowan was our first emperor. The fun fair that followed his every move was in such poor taste, but we did not realize it. Corruption by way of illegal enrichment of self with government money started before independence. Many of our so-called founding fathers were simply in the independence struggle to grab what they could as fast as they could. Nigerians, or as a friend pointed out, Southern youth spent 7.2 billion naira voting in the finals of Big Brother Nigeria. These same people would, who would talk of hardship and lambast boring and poorly educated northerners. Yet, this is what they spend their money on. The nation requires a reset. We lived a lie of moral uprightness for too long. My charge is to the National Assembly and State Houses of Assembly too, who have bills to formulate and pass that should aim at strengthening our social fabric. This is so important and relevant. Laws that will need to be enforced, that need to be fair but strict. These legislators should also inspect the constitution and laws already in existence and ensure they are well publicized and enforced. We will not achieve progress except this is done. We need to get an education and a life. You know, this reminds me of, I think, I think it was either you or Emeka who did an advocacy where it seemed you were saying we're stuck between two worlds. Was it you? I think uh, it was. Mecca. 
And um, it's, it's almost like what I, f I see at the heart of some of these issues we're suffering, and I don't necessarily put government in the center, is this failure to follow through on our convictions. I just feel you, you have to believe in something enough to say, look, you know, on this point, I will pitch my tent and I will we'll, we'll duke it out here, we'll dig it out. But a lot of times we find ourselves, you know, like even simple things like even road traffic offenses. You see someone driving on the wrong side of the road. And you, that's part of the frustration for me. You know, I'm not planning to check out of Nigeria, but these are the things that give me headache every day. You know, you see there's a rule, there's a law, obey it. You see people doing what they like. Yeah, but, and, your and did, but your governor did yesterday. He drove oh, the wrong way. Yes, your way. governor took one way yesterday. It, it has gone viral. Can't, you see, you see, see, it? And he was one who was telling us that he would deal with this matter. So these are the contradictions I see every day that can make you. It's not even that the problem exists, that you know, we're, we're a young, we're a nation that is still finding our feet. Oh, yes, there's corruption. But let there be one follow through in one area. Because even amongst us here, you find that there may be an issue that you would say, oh, there's, there's a way we should do it. But well, you find people say, eh, don't leave it. You know, there's that attitude of okay, allow it. Not everybody, you know. Eh. But we are the ones. We are the ones that are sustaining that state of lawlessness. We are the masses. You need to you know, What we say will stand. Will stand. You need to understand that the essence, the reason why we relinquish our individual rights in return for enforcement of these laws to, to a few, in return for protection welfare and enforcement of these collective laws. It's for a purpose. If you drive, really let me tell you this. You I used to have this attitude. Moral responsibility. I used to have this attitude until December. I was preparing to go to the village. And then I saw this uh, bullion van in the evening in traffic. Mm. And they were driving one way. And I blocked them with my car. And the man bashed the hell out of my car. Uh -huh. And I didn't have money to repair the car. And I was all alone, stranded. Uh -huh. And then somebody asked me, said, but come. Take picture and post it on social media. That is what they respect. But you going to you now you get strong head pass. You know, so while I, I admit partly that yes, we contribute to all of this, because I believe also the followers have a blame in this. But you find out that I always say when there is lawlessness in the land, where a government will make law but will be the first to disobey that mm -hmm. law, where court will give order. And one man, the emperor, like Chuka said, believes <laughs> otherwise, and so it should be so. You will be, I don't want to use the word stupid, to now stand in, in front of a moving train. You, you know, so but you have to stand it's for good for us, first and foremost, I agree, it's good for us to sensitize the people like we are doing now. Mm -hmm. Let us come together. I imagine on Sunday you see everybody goes to church. I imagine if members of Deep Ally, winners, redeem, Catholics, Methodists, we all troop out and say today, we hold service, including Nasfat and the rest, who hold service on Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Until this road is fixed. We will not move until something is it's done. done. Mm. Government will do something. But, live and for God, it is well. Mm. We won't achieve anything. Yeah, I, mean, I just so want to quickly you, throw you in. Want to just be one lone voice in, in the I want to throw in a quote because I think we're hamming. I am it here. I will it. No, please, you can come back. We're hamming ourselves because I, I remember a quote by uh, Wale Shoin Khan. He says, S -s -s "The man died Died. in all in all who keeps silent in the face of the, the tyranny face of, 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 of tyranny." Yeah. And I feel that that's what's happening to us. We're killing. We're dying slowly. Every day we keep quiet and we feel it's the government's fault. I and we're not dead. You need I'm not to. dead. And that's what I'm. I'm, I'm keeping myself. In the land of the living, because I refuse to stand and accept it. The boss, the horse has bolted. I can't do anything. No, Nigeria we can. Is already a we can, state. but we need that power tell. first. We need that. I'm power. not even waiting for power. We the don't one have I can it do individually. Today, do yes, we don't have it individually. No, we don't have it. No, no. I, 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 I insist we have some collectively. collectively. Is what the and that's why you would need but to start from for the religious body. collective power is also a delay tactic. No, no. Let the religious body start it. People like Benga and Sandra. You know, we need that collective approach. And it's how to get the collective. That's what our problem is. You see, Chuka, to be fair. you see, the issue is beyond what we are just uh, in the in the space where ten of you agree that today, don't you know how Jota? Uh, yes, yes, Occupy. Uh, Occupy Nigeria 2012. You know how it fizzled out yeah. on that Monday morning. Yes, where we were, we were when, at Labour House. We were, yes. And then we marched on Labour House over and, and, <laughs> and you know how far every one of us disappeared yeah. in the face of bullets. Of yes. Do you yeah, understand? Right, yes. So what I'm saying is that in the space of you 10 people saying today now today we no go agree. All the you no go agree CSO, civil, uh, civil society organizations, mm -hmm. where are they today? Since Chowale have been put, 
Listen, I'm not in his party. I don't I don't have any fraternity with him. But I'm saying is this guy and Abajaligo, your your, yeah, your yes. brother. Yes. What has been, I two saw, of them has been in Kasoyo. I saw Abajaligo in handcuffs. Yeah, handcuffs yes. And I'm asking for Can daring to call out a governor to what, account for 500 million, million of state funds. What did this guy? What did this guy? Really? What, yes. Meanwhile, in that same state, in 2017 or there, I cannot remember. I was in that airport, Margaret Expo International airport. airport. I, as I landed inside the airport, rain was falling inside the airport, mm. and I went to the station manager. Waiting happened. Hey, we actually have a quote. We have a quote about 400 and something thousand naira. We are going to fix it. What has he gushing okay. and dropping inside the airport? Just 30 minutes after, this same governor landed from wherever. It and I went there. out and I counted 34 vehicles. Mm -hmm. Come to pick it's one it's man. Yeah. 34 vehicles. Yeah. And I counted five, a particular car. Which, which. Five that, personnel inside. No. Five cars, there's this brand of a car, five of them, mm. the price of that car then was 55 million naira each. Mm. That would be and I saw five. That would be maybe the land cruiser. The, the land cruiser product. Uh, and, and, and I saw Not five. You understand? And plus other 34, one man, he came only with yeah. the aid and whatever. How many of them? All of them were not put to Budget them. of so, kinetic crystallization. Exactly. I remember when I talked so, about delusions of grandeur, when I said a president who, be, who drives around or is driven around like the Buhari um, 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 motorcade. It, motorcade. So when he came back from three months abroad or mm -hmm. four months, and you should have seen the length of that. So, so let, me, let me drive this home. The money. That people, Nigerians already, the mindset is that Sandra finished as special advisor. Mm -hmm. Come out. As I want come to out, yeah. recommend me. Make I enter too. That is the mindset. Exactly. They can don't be deceived. I know. It's, I, Do you it's like I don't know. Aha. Uh -huh. So Buhari came back from the last trip, mm -hmm. and you see ministers, senators, you see yeah. the lining up, lining up to welcome. welcome him. So, so there is something wrong, wrong with our something. mind. Something is wrong. Our yeah. mind yeah. needs to be renewed. People run down know. from the plane mm -hmm. on the same journey with yeah. them. Basically, I think so, we've talked about these issues for so long. Mm -hmm. This is not the first time. It's not going to be the last that we continue to, you know, analyze all of the issues of Nigeria. Um, Chuka said something about the legislation and the calling out the National Assembly and the State House of Assembly to enact these laws and also to ensure the implementation of these laws. Let me talk um, briefly on the Child Rights Act. The Child Rights Act was um, passed into law in 2003, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. This is 2019, yes. and f f Nigeria is the federal system of government, and unfortunately, the Child Rights Act, um, we do not have the doctrine of covering the field. So, w 2019, that's about 13 years after. No, 16. 16, 16 years, years after, after and not Nothing. all 36 states have in, in passed the Child Rights Act. Domesticated, domesticated it. Why do you do this domesticated? The Violence no, Against must. Persons what? Act is yeah. also a very it's brilliant law. If you, if you take an exposition into the Violence Against Persons Act, it's a very brilliant law. But unfortunately, it's applicable only to Abuja. The federal capital territory. So it means that the other 36 states, we are still, we haven't really solved any other issue. So I think. Um, and, and lastly, propagating uh, lastly, a few seconds. This impunity started from when, as a palm sec, your job is not secure. You can be sacked over the radio during yeah. Murtala Mohammed's era, and yeah. so psychophancy yeah. took over. Yeah. And that's what was. That was the beginning. Yeah. That was the beginning well, of our problem. Well, thank you very much. Um, you, uh, we can see we'll never tire in our advocacy. So don't you give up either. Keep your comments coming in on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time, let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye bye. Bye bye. We'll be <laughs> here. Bye. <laughs> Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. So the moment impressed. you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics and enjoys for as long as political meetings, 
continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's really? disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware it, of the it, chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a very terrible, backfire. Backfire. <laughs> terrible strategy. Yeah. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria has become in a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. How we like to hit the tracks. No time wasting. After the break, let's go there. Be body. <laughs> <laughs> You're not serious. My people were very happy with your be body. <laughs>